One tool that everyone will need this trimester to make pottery is a cutoff wire. This is a cutoff wire that is purchased at a ceramic supply store. Really nice cutoff wire, but they cost several dollars. So to provide one for everybody would cost several hundred dollars. So instead we're going to make our own cutoff wires with some fishing line and some clay. So we're going to sculpt our little cutoff wires or what we call lugs in pottery terms and then run some fishing line between it. You can see that these three were made by the same artist, Macy Newman. She had ceramics um, once every trimester, her senior year, and had a theme for her cutoff wires throughout the whole year. So um, let's look at the criteria, some things to think about while you're making your cutoff wire uh, very quickly. This criteria is also posted on Canvas, so you can uh, have a reminder of what it is. But first of all, the lugs or the handles just can't be too thick. If it's much thicker than your thumb, then you're going to have to thin it out and make it uh, a little bit more thin so that they don't explode when they fire. If there's thick clay, there's a possibility that water will be trapped inside the center of that thick clay and can uh, explode. Also, though, you don't want it to be too thin. If it's too thin, while you're working with the cutoff wire, they could break. We also need to consider how we're going to fire the cutoff wires, or excuse me, the, the lugs for their, our handles. And there's two approaches. One is to hang them from a bead bar, and the second is to place it on a stilt. So there has to be a flat surface to your lugs. And then the last thing is, is that this cutoff wire should be a reflection of you as a person or of you as an artist. So I should learn something about you when it comes to your cutoff wire. So for example, here's a person that uh, likes Harry Potter, that's a sorting hat, and chili peppers. So kind of fun little cutoff wires. You can see the hole in the back where the string will be uh, strung through there. Um, really quite like these ones. These are just a short sword and a shield. So kind of fun uh, little cutoff wires as well. You know, that's, that's a, a thin sword, but it's not too thin, so we're okay. And then one more here, this person, as I think most can agree, likes a nice donut. So very simple idea, but good sturdy cutoff wires. I'm going to use for my um, design a cow skull. I just think they look kind of cool. It's a very western kind of idea. A little too much clay there. But you're just going to need a small piece of clay. You want the 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 lugs to fit nicely into your hand. You don't want it to be too big or too small. So I'm just going to start to sculpt this clay and move this clay around and eventually get it into a somewhat of a cow skull shape. Now if you need a reference picture then you can use your phone and just look up an image to help with your sculpture. But I've drawn a lot of cow skulls in my day and I have a good idea of what they'd look like. So I'm just going to start sculpting it. So you can, you can see the beginning there. I'm going to use my the handle on my uh, needle tool, make some indentations for the eyes. I really want to build up that eyebrow. Maybe even in, indent that a little bit. And let's put a little groove down here as the cow skull opens up at the bottom. So they can be, you know, fairly simple. They don't have to be really super complex or anything, but you do want them to look kind of good. Okay, I could spend quite a bit of time. I'll probably spend another, you know, maybe another 15 minutes on that lug. But that's a good starting point. Now, what we talked about as far as criteria is that we need to figure out how we're going to fire these. When it comes to firing a piece of pottery, or like these lugs, notice that there is glaze all the way around that lug. We want to glaze the whole thing because it'll just make it stronger. However, if I put this on a kiln shelf and fire it in a kiln with glaze underneath it, it'll stick to the kiln shelf. So I've got to do one of two things. First of all, I can use uh, this bead bar, or this bead bar and this bead tree, and actually 
put a hole through my lugs so that when I put them in the kiln, they will hang and not touch the kiln shelf. The other approach is to um, use one of these stilts, which it just has little like pins on the end of it, and place my lug on top of that stilt. That one's too narrow. Let's see if this one will work. There we go. So that again, it doesn't touch the kiln shelf. So this one has a nice flat bottom to it, so I can put it on a, on a still like that. Whereas this one is not, so I have to hang this one from a bead bar. So you gotta make a decision on which approach you're going to fire it. Is it going to be on a stilt, or will it be on a bead bar? In this case, I could probably go either direction. I could probably put that on a stilt for firing. Um, but I'm going to hang this from a bead bar. So to do that, I'm going to slide the actual bar through my clay. And I'm going to rotate that just a little bit to make that hole a little bit bigger. Then you can see that that makes kind of a rough edge. So I'm going to smooth that out and clean that up a little bit on both sides. Any rough edges will become really sharp when it fires and could potentially uh, cut your fingers. So I'm just going to clean that up. Notice this is a little thick, a little bit thicker than my thumb. So I'm also going to use my loop tool and I'm just going to hollow out some of that clay from the backside. And then again, I'm going to clean that up as well. Okay, like I said before, this still needs quite a bit of work. I need to, to clean some things up, make that a little more detailed. And then I'm going to set this out to dry. The next step is that we want this to dry overnight. So here's one that I made yesterday. And you can see by the color that it's quite a bit lighter. And that's a good sign. We want it to be nice and light in color because the next step, and you can see that hole where I'm gonna hang it, the next step is to glaze our lugs. Um, in this case, I've got a white skull, so I'm going to glaze it with a white glaze. And it doesn't have to be, it can be a black glaze. I've got red and greens and blues and yellows. The glaze we're gonna use is this low fire glaze out of these small containers. It's very expensive glaze. It's about $10 for a container. And so we want to use these sparingly throughout the trimester. We don't use these for a lot of assignments. But to prepare the glaze, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a shake. Now notice as I do that, I have my hand on top. That's just in case the lid isn't on very tight. I've had a few experiences where a student shakes the glaze this way without their finger on top and that lid comes off and gets glaze all over the person next to them. It's actually happened a few times, so <laughs> I want to be careful. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just uh, paint. Just going to put a coat of glaze. We call it painting, but it's really just a glaze. We'll talk about what's in a glaze later on. But one of the things in a glaze is uh, sand. And that sand, when melted, gives the glaze a shiny or glossy look to it. And what we're going to do is put on three coats of glaze. So before I do the bottom, I'm going to make sure the top is glazed and dried before I put any glaze on the bottom. So we've got to be a little patient with it. But you can see already that that glaze is starting to dry, so that dries pretty quick. Now one thing we want to be careful about, which I was not just now, is inside that hole where my bead bar goes, I can't have any glaze inside of there. And I just got some glaze in there. So, to fix that, I'm going to take my needle tool and just scrape out any glaze that's inside that hole. If there's any glaze in there, when I fire it, that glaze will stick to the bead bar. And then it'll be hard to get it off of that bead bar. So make sure there's no glaze inside of there. All right, so that's just one coat of white glaze. What I'm gonna do after I get three coats of white is um, I'm going to use this red glaze and put some red in between 
um, this opening and inside the eyes. And then I'm going to use some black glaze on top of that as well. So that when I am finished and it's fired, it's going to look something like that. Okay. So you can see that shiny surface from the, the, the sand that's in the glaze once it melts. And I've got some red and black, added some dots on it as well. So however you want to glaze them, we just need to make sure there's three coats. All right, once they're fired, then we can string some uh, string through there and you'll be ready to go with your cutoff wires. So let's uh, get just a little bit of clay and start making these things. They should be done within a couple days.